Here we have some rules. Let us lay them down. Bum, 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 bum. What's this video? Uh, oh, IP. IP's Ips. But I just have to add one now. Okay. How many did you do? Five? Robert better not get in my face. I'm not going to call him dad. Ever. Even, Even if, if there's, there's a, a fire. fire. <laughs> Twins. I still feel like our heads are cut off. Like your head's cut off. Better? Yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about... Board games. And... Step Brothers t-shirts. That's right. You have to call me Dragon. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> You have to call me Nighthawk. I forgot. I like chocolate chips with my pancakes and fresh fruit. She's mom now. We are here today to do a video all about IPs, IPs, intellectual properties that we would like to see made into board games, brought into the board game world. I would like to preface this by saying that we did zero research on whether or not these IPs have already been made into board games. I didn't do any, did you? I did. You did? I didn't do any research. so there No, I didn't do any research and I'm realizing that the one I picked there is, there is a board game. It's fine. So maybe we'll talk a little <clears throat> bit about the IP, why we would think it would make a good board game. Maybe we'll think about like what kind of board game it could be. All that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We each have five, so there's a list of 10. I actually prepared one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But I'm only gonna talk about five. <laughs> but I just had so many. I love movies and TV shows, so we're gonna be talking about like movies, games, books, TV mine, shows. Mine are video games or books. Really? Mine are a little bit of everything and then some. So let's jump into it. Jeffrey, would you like to start first? Sure. Okay. I've mentioned this before on an earlier video. Yes, I know what it is. The first one for me is a Legend of Zelda board game. Yes. And not any type of board game. Mm -hmm. I want a Legend of Zelda big box big open box. world campaign game a la Sleeping Gods. A la Sleeping Gods. How friggin' incredible. Can it be based on Ocarina of Time? That's the only one I've played. I don't think I would care. I would, uh, Ocarina of Time would be great. A Link to the Past is my favorite Zelda game, mm -hmm. um, which is the old one for Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. The original Zelda is also very good, the one for uh, NES. I would be fine with, with any of those. I think you could mix Wind Waker. That Wind art Waker. style would be incredible. I wouldn't care. You want an open world sandboxy campaign Zelda game. Zelda game. 100%. I don't know why it hasn't been done. That I wonder would, if it's hard that, to get the IP. Oh yeah, 100% has to do with how much it would probably cost to get that IP. Yeah. But man, that thing would sell. What happened? Oh, God. Ah. Where'd it go? Well, it's in my eyes. Something got underneath it. Eh. Ow. Who would you want to publish That it? would sell like hotcakes. I don't care. <laughs> if we're doing Sleeping Gods, I trust Ryan Lockett's ability to make incredible campaign sandboxy games. Give it to Red Raven Games. Give it to them. I don't care. Just I don't care. Let's make it happen, people. Yeah. So I'm also going to choose a video game, and that is going to be Animal Crossing. Did you pick it? No. Okay. I don't know why this hasn't been done yet. They did Stardew Valley. Animal Crossing is so popular. It would also sell like crazy. It's adorable, and the game could be you're literally building out your island. Mm -hmm. It could even be just a solo game mm -hmm. where you're like connecting with the different town, the islander folk. You're building up different things. You're opening stores. Do you're you know collecting resources. I keep thinking of Charterstone. Charterstone would be like a good way to do Animal Like that Crossing. system. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, come on, people. Why mm. haven't we done this yet? So, I mean, if we're going to go Charterstone, then we're going to go Stonemeyer Games. Could do yes. it, obviously. Yeah, Jamie, go. come on. Let's do this. I just want it the, so bad. The IPs must cost an app, like... They, either they wouldn't want to do it. They'd be mm -hmm. like, no. The IPs wouldn't. would cost a ton, yes, but imagine how many you would sell. I know. I don't know anything about the back end of how these things work. So yeah, me either. Let's keep that in mind I and guess, take yeah. all of this with a grain of salt. Sure. I just think about Stardew Valley. Like, we haven't played that game. We haven't even looked at the rule book. We haven't even tried to learn it. We bought it because it's yeah, Stardew we'll Valley. It. It's I know, so but can you beautiful. imagine an Animal Crossing version of that? Mm -hmm. Why hasn't it yeah. been done? Yeah. Please, somebody do it. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. I want a nook shop in real life. Let's make it like the Castles of Burgundy new Kickstarter. Like everything is like life size. Mm -hmm. Next up for me is based off of a book by Brom. Brom, 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 Brom. And that is The Child Thief. Mm -hmm. We've briefly mentioned this book, I think, in multiple different videos yeah, that yeah. we've done. But 
essentially Child Thief is a dark retelling, a horror-themed retelling of Peter Pan by Brom, who used to work for Blizzard Entertainment, I believe. The basic premise is the same, but it's way more horror-themed. Peter only saves the most distraught kids, the poor kids, the runaways, Mm -hmm. the abused. He brings them into a place called Devil Tree in order to save the lady. I'm getting way too much into this. Yeah. But basically, just a darker, much darker, much horror-esque themed version of Peter Pan. Like, it's not a kid's book. And it wouldn't be a kid's game. So I can foresee some sort of, like, version of this game where you're playing one of the kids that Peter is trying to recruit to go to Devil Tree to fight off flesh eaters or, you know, like, I don't know, maybe something like Tales from the Loop, you know, where you're a group of kids that are, you know, traversing this land and like... People yeah. love Peter Pan in general. I love Peter Pan. I love horror. Mm-hmm. I want this game. Mm-hmm. Somebody, can you do make this game? Yep. Do make it, please. My next one <clears throat> is going to be a little IP called The Muppets. Oh, jeez. Okay? Listen to me. I don't know if there's Muppet games. There probably is. The point is, I love The Muppets. Like, I love The Muppets. And just think. In I love them. So I think that you could do a really fun, I don't even know what kind of a game it would be. I'm just trying to think, like, is there something that I would, I don't even know. Hmm. I don't even know. I don't even know. Actually, do you know what I I think? I don't even know. Do you know what would be the best? Okay. The Muppets are always solving crimes and mysteries. I was going to say some sort of social deduction game. Like the initiative. But with the Muppets. But the Muppets are the ones that are that are solving all of the puzzles mm-hmm. and whatever. And you've got all the classics. You've got Kermit and you've got <coughs> Piggy and Gonzo and you got Pepe the Shrimp and What about Rizzo. like a Muppets exit game? Yes. <laughs> something like that. I am here for an entire Muppets exit series. Please. I just love the Muppets. I just think it's so fun. It would be kid friendly and adult friendly because everybody loves the Muppets. You could infuse so much humor into it. Mm-hmm. I just think it would be amazing. Yeah. I would love to see that. And I would love the lead invest. I think the lead investigator would be Gonzo and his sidekick would be Rizzo because that's usually how it goes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then Pepe would just be there for humor. Next up for me is based off of one of probably my favorite graphic novel series. Mm-hmm. And that is Sandman. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sandman is a very... Uh, Weird. A abstract, <laughs> obscure graphic novel series where things in life are personified like greed misery stuff like that neil Um, gaiman right neil gaiman yeah Mm -hmm. i think you could do a very odd twisted take on that basically in sandman you have i'm gonna list them here yeah dream destiny death despair delirium destruction which are the seven endless and they all interact and intertwine and interweave into our world narrative. Mm. It's told by Dream, who is also known as Morpheus. So there's a lot of play here in terms of mythology and humanity and all of the things that we think about. I don't know what type of game. Oh, I have an idea. Yeah, Something like ahead. Mansions of Madness. Yeah, exactly. Right? With an app and then mm-hmm. just not campaign, but just different scenarios. Scenario-based game where yeah. you're playing as, as Dream or you could play as one of the other seven endless. Yeah. And, you know, maybe you're trying to, I don't know, uh, impact humanity or drive people crazy or, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, you'd have different goals based on the based scenario. Based on who you are. Asymmetrical player powers based on what type of endless you're playing mm-hmm. as. I think that'd be really neat. And I... <laughs> someone just, <laughs> we have our windows open. Across the end of the room here, and someone just walked by her <laughs> and blew in his nose, but it sounded exactly like oh, any cartoon nose blow you ever heard is like, oh. he's super far away, so that had to have been very loud. Yeah, Neil Gaiman, in my opinion, is one of the best storytellers. Take any of his books, yeah. it, I mean, Graveyard Book, um, uh, The Ocean at the End of the Lane, Ocean at the End of the Lane, Monster Amer- Calls. American Gods, which already called out. The artwork in it is incredible, it's insanely abstract and beautiful. and mm-hmm. He is a master storyteller, and I think it would be incredible to experience that in a board game form. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so since you just did a graphic novel, perhaps I will talk about the graphic novel that I picked. Saga? I was going to. It was on my short list. It wasn't Saga? No. It's Lock and Key. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that and, would be a good Mansions of Madness game. Yes. Yeah, so Lock and Key is a graphic novel written by. Don't tell me. It's. Uh, <laughs> I won't tell you because I don't know. It's Stephen King's son. Robert King. No, his last name's not King. Joe Hill. Joel Hill. Joe. Joe Hill. <laughs> this was also made into a TV show, which, by the way, was shot where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So it's shot in like the Lun in Lunenburg, so really close to where I grew up. So if you ever watch Lock and Key on Netflix, which you should, yeah, if you see where the, I'm from. If you see the town that they're in when they pan out and it's got all the color for houses and yeah. stuff, that is... Uh, Jamie's basically like where she yeah and the school and everything this is a story about a family that moves into this old house it belonged to their father when he was a kid and within this house there's a bunch of keys they find all these keys that do these different things and it is very spooky it's horror-esque for sure and essentially I do think that this would make a great like either campaign or scenario based game where in like each time you would be lur looking lurking <laughs> looking for a certain key then you'd have to find the door open up that door and then go through an entire story of where that door takes you mm -hmm. I don't know I was just thinking okay I was like, is there something there? You had that look like a cat gets when they see a ghost. And it's just like... No, I was just thinking. I think that this could be spooky, but also fun and like almost like mystery puzzle solving because there's a lot of like puzzly type things within this story mm -hmm. with a lot of like also really creepy, crazy things that happen in this house. So the entire game, I think, would happen within the house. Mm -hmm. Next up for me is another video game, which you've probably never heard of. Um, I struggled between two games. I've heard of Mario. And <laughs> I picked this one because I thought it would be probably the easier of the IPs to do. But that is Secret of Mana. Secret of Mana. Oh. Is that the one with the little rock people? No. No. Oh. I'm going to. I just thought of a game that's way better. Okay. okay. Exactly. Next one for me is another video game. And it's probably my top three video games of all time. I and that I is Chrono Trigger. So Chrono Trigger <laughs> is a video game for the Super Nintendo system, Entertainment System. <laughs> Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System. System. SNES. You are basically playing characters and trying to defeat uh, a boss, yeah. as most video games are. But you're doing this by traveling through time mm. constantly. You meet this person who kind of exists in this, what's it called? Um, pur purgatory? Yeah, the space in between yeah, like Kind of in this purgatory space that can control time and you are able to kind of manipulate these worlds and you're trying to essentially make things line up mm -hmm. so that at the end of it, you are in the right timeline with the mm. right equipment and the right resources in order to defeat the boss. Are we looping? I think it would be really cool. Again, I, I had to hammer out the campaign game element. I think it'd be really cool to take that game and turn it into like a Sleeping Gods type environment where not only are you navigating one world but you're navigating multiple worlds and maybe the boards are all different mm -hmm. depending on which world you're in or there's multiple storybooks that depending on what yeah what timeline you're in you have to go to a different storybook and you enter through portals and i don't know yeah we should be in game design we, we should be in game design I'm i don't want to do any of the work i just want to be like i'm the idea guy yeah i would Here's love to idea. do the work i can do the work you go with it <laughs> but even something like the loop mm -hmm. if you want it to make it a simpler game not so involved the loop from pandasaurus where you're literally jumping through time zones and you're the, trying the to fulfill only, objectives the and... only thing i guess you could add is like it's an rpg game right so you are uh fighting battles upgrading your characters right. getting new weapons finding new characters mm -hmm. to join your party that sort of thing so mm -hmm. i don't know how you could you could technically just have cards that you would build out on your tableau i guess if you were to do something like the loop yep to get more powerful. Maybe the loop, but like it is a campaign loop game. Yeah. My next one. Oh, I have six starred classic. Okay. The next one that I'm going to do is a book series that also did become a movie series as well. And that is Maze Runner. Yeah. I just feel like this would translate really, really well to a board game. Maze Runner is about a group of kids who get thrown into this, it's like a dystopian world where they get thrown into this area and mm. they're surrounded by this huge maze that they can't seem to escape. So every day they send people out to run through the maze to try and map it out. The maze changes every day. There's things within the maze that can kill you, all of that and stuff. And it closes. And it closes at night. So I don't know what kind of game this would be, but it would be a puzzly type of game mm -hmm. where you're literally trying to figure out. I think it would it would bode really well to have an app with this game that every time you play it, the maze changes. 
-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's never the same game twice. It's a really, really cool world because like like when you go beyond the initial book or movie, the world gets bigger and bigger, essentially. And you find out a lot more things that I'm not going to say because they're all spoilers. You know what? Screw it. Make it a campaign game. (laughs) Go through the entire series. Have it be with an app. I know some people are like, "Mm, apps, but... I like an app based yeah. game personally. I don't know, maybe even something like Return to Dark Tower where you actually have like the maze that like mm-hmm. spits things out or something. Last one for me is also a book series. I wonder what and it is. It's been done by, uh, it's an author who already has multiple iterations of board games for his books. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is Brandon Sanderson. It's not what I thought you were going to say. But this book has not been done, to my knowledge, into a board game, and that is Mistborn. Mm -hmm. So Brandon Sanderson currently, I'm looking at you, Brother Wise Games. Let's make this happen. Let's make this happen. So Stormlight Archive has been turned into a board game via the Call to Adventure series. There's also a Reckoners Reckoners. board game, which we haven't played, but I'm, I'm... really looking forward to Rodney just showed it to us I'm trying to find a copy it's huge Brandon Sanderson is I think at this point probably my favorite author I've read multiple of his books Mm -hmm. I love all of them and Mistborn I think is probably my second favorite I think Stormlight Archive is probably my favorite at this point but Mistborn has a really really rich world and has one of the coolest magic systems I've ever seen in a novel Mm. wherein it's actually based on metals Cooling metals. So different types of metals allow people that are able to manipulate these metals in different ways. So different metals will do different things. Copper will do something different than gold and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I could see, brotherwise, call to adventure Mistborn. Brotherwise, Johnny, Chris, come on now. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I just love the worlds and magic systems that Brandon Sanderson's able to create in mm-hmm. his novels. And given how many he's done, they're all different. And it's incredible. I can see a Mistborn board game. I don't care what the mechanic is. I just want to live in that world. I'm having a really hard time deciding between my last two. Because as I mentioned, I starred six and I have 15 written down. My last two, I'm between Stranger Things and Shrek. (laughs) One of these things, like the other. but I feel like we've already talked about so many. There's gonna be Shrek, though. You think there's already a Shrek game? If there isn't, they're gonna. There is, has. Is to, there not already like a no? Shrek is DreamWorks. Oh. <laughs> the point is, heart. just know that I really want a Shrek board game, but I'm gonna go with Stranger Things because Stranger Things is super hot right now, just like Hansel. So hot right now. <laughs> super hot right now. <laughs> super hot right now, and the world is just Jamie. What? Tales from the Loop, but Stranger Things. Okay, so I was going to say that or Cthulhu Death May Die. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So Stranger Things, I feel like everybody knows what it's about. Set in the 80s, it's just a bunch of kids who are dealing with a bunch of supernatural... Basically. So I'm so thinking good. a game like Cthulhu Death May Die because it is, it's like a boss battler, like monster mm-hmm. hunter, mm-hmm. dice roller. Mm-hmm. Talk to me. It's a bit more interactive. Yep. And like literally what these kids mm. are doing, <laughs> they're trying to fix a problem, solve these goals while defeating these monsters. And each player would be asymmetrical. Talk to me. Right? Because you've got Dustin, who's a bit of the brainiac, and he's figuring stuff out. And then you've got Elle, and she's got all the powers. And then you've got Will, and he's just just sad. (laughs) Poor Will. Like, Nancy would be like... Sleuthy and she's like investigating stuff. This would be an amazing retheme, reskin mm-hmm. of Cthulhu Death May Die. Mm-hmm. We love Stranger Things. We just finished the new season, so it's really like so good. It's so good. Top of mind. Mm-hmm. I just think like how could you not? And maybe there's gotta be a Stranger Things game already, right? I'm assuming there's like a monopoly or something. <laughs> Right. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Those are the games that we picked. Did you have any honorable mentions? Because I, I was convinced that you were going to say King Killer Chronicles. There is one. Very right. That's So I had Stormlight Archive and I was like, wait, there's already one. Yeah. King Killer Chronicles. If you want to get into the business of IPs that already have something. That you want to make, them... make them blow them up. Yeah. Name of the Wind, 100%. Give me a sleeping god's up. name of the wind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Take my money. <laughs> yeah. So those are the games that, are, that the IPs that we'd love to see as games and some pretty solid starter ideas around them. So publishers, if you're interested, everything is TM, yeah. tra- trademarked by us, by the people who actually wrote the stories. Yes. <laughs> we would love to know also down below what are some IPs that you would like to see hmm. turned into games because like the 
possibilities are endless, people. Yes. We just want to know. Anyways, that is all we have for you guys today. So if you are interested in buying board games, many that are already based off of IPs, <laughs> you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, that is... Boardroom Game Cafe. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. Such a perfect town. I like um, it. I like it. Crazy. Okay, that's my first one. Stop. <clears throat> Got it. Ugh, that was very crystallized. Crystallized. That hurts. Hungry eyes. Okay. I think it's his best work. If <laughs>